El Palo Alto, the great revit tree, was placed on the Stanford seal in 1885. The football program began in 1892, and the color cardinal was chosen as the official color in 1893. After coaching Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indians to a national championship to defeat the Harvard Crimson, and then coaching two more teams to national championships, Pop Warner was brought west to coach the Cardinal. He pioneered the forward pass, the overhand spiral, the screenplay, and other trick running plays in the backfield that brought Stanford to its only national title in 1926. It was during Pop's reign as head coach that Stanford adopted the Indian as its mascot in 1930. In 1971, 55 Native students delivered a letter to President Lyman asking him to drop the Indian mascot. Stanford was the first major university to acknowledge the rights of Native Americans and their request to remove what this mascot represented. What school has a tree as a mascot? What we recall about the Stanford band is that they were a little bit loose. You tried to audition, to audition for the band. And the manager told me, we don't do that. I had no idea what I was getting into. The clock had run out. I, I offered to challenge. He laughed and said, we don't do that. We're the Stanford Band. And they could do what they wanted to do. But I got a letter that was addressed to Dear Freshman Band God. From where we were, you couldn't see much. I watched the first couple of games from the stadium stands. I thought, my God, I got to be a part of this. And then the blue struck campus. And you went, oh, it's over. I had the opportunity to try out. Kind of envied that because some of the bands were really, really uptight. Got into the band. That was the last year of the band shack. There was a formation that was an outhouse. The shack burned down under mysterious circumstances. And I looked up because the whole band was parting in from moving this way. But we assured the ABC people and our athletic director that it was really a job shack. And then you realized that it was still moving and still coming down. People were trying to, to break out. Most of the students wanted to be the robber barons. Kevin Moen comes plowing through. No one was to know who I was. We were surly enough to be one-off. We were uh, heading down for the USC game in 75, our senior year. It seemed like we got away with everything. And yet we were musically excellent enough to have people just go, wow. These, these two guys were the guys that first came up with the idea for the tree. I'm told that uh, we're not supposed to mention Mouse's name in connection with the destruction of that shack. I'm driving the U-Haul truck and uh, Eric's riding shotgun. Were we uh, of sober mind and body or were we a little bit, uh, I don't know. They think out of the box like Stanford people do. May have been. Truck fumes. Truck yeah, fumes. truck That's fumes, right yes. Having carted uh, large quantities of, of cores in the back of the equipment truck, which we then sold to the liquor stores based on a two-for-one offer. Holy order of the fries, that was as we were going by at McDonald's. The tree was, you know, one of the brainchilds of Bob and Eric. I think they had a hamburger and a hot dog that was walking around the halftime field. We were just searching for something. I'm not sure what would have explained uh, the attack of munchies that apparently ensued. Ouch, that's got to hurt. And it slammed the helmet off and it rolled right toward me. And I remember not wanting to touch it. Don't touch the hat. Tim was invited to be the mascot years ago by some Stanford students that had come from San Francisco. We had a whole tree halftime show that we had a tree queen and a tree and nymphs with a banner that just said nymph. I was on a committee to pick a new nickname for us. Then we came up with the uh, cowboys. President Lyman threw it out. And we got into the shape of a tree, I think and played I'm a Lumberjack and I'm okay. Tim was actually a little conflicted, he wasn't sure. The Mike White Axe story. They invited him, you know, to perform at a big game. Of course it was the last game, it's a big game. Tim was one of the most comfortable people in both the Indian world and the white man's world. The band had the axe. He actually walked in between these two worlds very, very easily. The axe was simply affixed with wing nuts. And he was fine with being the mascot at Stanford. And I am the first Stanford tree. Dylan, we didn't think anything would come of it. It was just a joke. And, and Bob put it in his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Any publicity was better than none. So I have the accent pad, and there's these cow weenies sitting right next to us. I don't know what they thought we were doing. 
But the game wasn't over yet and they had were turning to watch the game and while they were watching the game we unscrewed the axe from the back of the locker. But Tim did it for, uh, well, 20 years. We weren't going to be the Red and Whites or the Cardinals or the Griffins or anything. We were just nothing. It was in 72 was when the university said, thank you very much, we don't want you around anymore. At the end of the game, the guys from Cal grabbed the placard and ran across the field and handed it to Mike. And Mike White's on the shoulders of the players and he's got this the plaque with the three holes in it. <laughs> you know, and it just says, where's the ax? The Robert Barron, yeah, oh, I yeah. love it. White looked at it and, and realized there was nothing on it. And they figure it out, and then they're running around like, where the hell is the axe? Because, you know, we used to go out in the pregame and form an axe. And then Tim would dance. Yeah, Chief Life would come down, and he was great. We actually weren't sure what, 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 <laughs> what we were do doing with the axe. It's like a dog chasing a car. They are creative. They're unconventional. There was a reason we could fit the axe yeah, in right, Bob's right, right. And we would play uh, the, what was called the scalp song. And we were getting an we ass I mean, we just got killed. Them. And that was the tradition for, for many, many years up through the uh, early 70s. We run out to the middle of the field, say, hey, you want the axe back? And hey, they would said, you like sure. an axe? I happen to have an extra. Yeah. That was probably the shortest and the least known theft of the Stanford axe, but it actually did happen. Maybe in the minority, but I, our band really ticked me off. From 1951 to 1972, Tim Williams was the official mascot on the field for the Stanford Indians. He was deemed Prince Lightfoot. The 50s was also when the Eisenhower administration attempted to terminate Indian reservations throughout the United States. And in 1963, an ouster of the marching band's director caused a band strike. Arthur P. Barnes was hired, and the entirely student-run LSJUMB was formed. Public opinion was steadily turning against the Vietnam War. Martin Luther King was bringing awareness to cultural and ethnic inequalities in the land of the free and the brave. The American Indian Movement coordinated the Alcatraz takeover to bring awareness to Native American inequalities. The tree, the new Stanford mascot, was born at Big Game 1975.